a brand new R-rated cartoon is trending on Amazon and is not only simply raunchy, but it actually makes Lucifer, Lilith, and the Princess of Hell the heroes of the story. And of course, now stop me if you've heard this before, God and his angels are the bad guys. As more and more filth continues to be promoted and God continues having his character be smirched as we look at how this new show is telling the same old lies. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking at the Has Been Hotel. Yes, a new trending. In fact, the number two show currently on all of Amazon Prime Video right now. But before we get into that, we would love, if you felt so led, to like this video as well as subscribe to the Good Fight Ministries YouTube channel. And could you please leave a five-star review if you're listening to this via podcast. All of those things just help this to bing, go up there on the algorithm so more and more people will know what's going on. Well, with all of that, yes, there is a new show and this show is trending and it is popular and it is once again telling the same old Gnostic lies, once again dipping into mythology and mostly, if truth be told, simply the hatred of God. That's what all of this has to do. And I'm going to read right from the description from Amazon for the new show, Has Been Hotel. This adult animated musical series follows Charlie, the princess of hell, as she pursues her seemingly impossible goal of rehabilitating demons to peacefully reduce overpopulation in her kingdom. After a yearly extermination that was imposed by heaven, she opens a hotel in the hopes that patrons will be checking out after proving their souls are redeemable. Now, this is the description that people are clicking on to see, hey, should I watch this new animated series? And the series is as profane as you could imagine any series. It is basically the family guy. If the family guy was turned into uh, pornography and not only that, it is basically the family guy with even more cussing, uh, more blasphemous, which, you know, that can be hard to be done with the way that show has um, also besmirched the character of God or attempted to. And when you're seeing this, I mean, you have these people in hell, these demons and so forth. And one of the things that they do is make Adam uh, a wicked angel that's out there sleeping around with a bunch of people and then killing all of these poor souls that she is trying to redeem. And this is not a the first foray. In fact, a lot of people are seeing the show for the first time, but a lot of people have already seen it because as the show's creator, Vivian, also known as Vivzy Pop, that YouTube channel has garnered hundreds of millions of views. And in fact, the original pilot for this show actually has 95 million views and was completely funded by Patreon subscribers to her artwork. Now, she is someone, the creator of the show, is someone who grew up in the Presbyterian church, and she seemingly hates God as much as she tries to act like, oh, this is just mythology and, and so forth. And get a little bit of a taste of what the show is like from just the first couple minutes of it. There was a glowing city protected by golden gates. It was ruled by angels that worshipped good. Lucifer was one of these angels. He was a dreamer with fantastical ideas. They felt his way of thinking was dangerous. From the dust of earth they created Adam and Lilith. Equals as the first of mankind, Adam demanded control and Lilith refused. Lucifer found her and the two rebellious dreamers fell in love. They wished to share the magic of free will, offering the knowledge to Adam's new bride, Eve. This gift came with a curse. Evil finally found its way into Earth. As punishment for their reckless act, heaven cast Lucifer and his love into the dark pit. Lucifer lost his will to dream, but Lilith thrived. As the numbers of hell grew, so did 
its power. Threatened by this, Heaven made a decision that every year they would send down an army to ensure hell could never rise against them. But Lilith's hope remained, and her dream was passed down to their precious daughter, the Princess of Hell. Now, as stated in the introduction of this episode, it is just simply the same old lies. You're hearing of Lilith. You're hearing of Lucifer coming and wanting to give people free will, giving them that gnosis, that knowledge. And although there are a number of different ways that this is repackaged, there is nothing new under the sun. Satan is using the same old tactics, and he's making himself look like the good guy through these shows. But I want to dig a little bit deeper into this idea of Lilith, because so many people get involved in this, I guess, feminism. Uh, they're trying to push some of these mystery religions and so forth. And the background to Lilith is quite interesting if you want to look into it. Now, of course, if you go on and just watch video after video, you'll have people telling you, oh, this was actually a story from Sumeria and so forth. But then you'll realize that what they do is they'll take the most modernized version of the story and then implement it back into when a name was used in an ancient time. And so when we actually get this story that she's actually taking this from, this is from something that is probably around 700 years after the time of Jesus when it's fully formed by uh, Jewish writers that were involved in more paganism and so forth. And what this writing is from is called the Alphabet of Ben Sirah, specifically uh, 78, where Lilith is talked about in the same light and what is done in this mythology, and that's all it is. Uh, it's Jewish mythology. It's uh, the meanderings of someone who doesn't really care about what the Bible actually teaches and teaches this idea of Lilith being the first, actually, it wasn't Adam and Eve, it was Adam and Lilith. And really, there are two creation myths, so to speak. And these two creation myths, in the first one, Lilith comes forth, and then Eve later. And Lilith was actually on the same wavelength as Adam, and, and Eve is subordinate, you know, later and so forth. Now, obviously, just from a plain reading of the book of Genesis, not with all the myth mythology and nonsense added onto it, you're never going to come to that conclusion. There's no one named Lilith. But there is actually somewhere in Scripture where we can see the terminology is seemingly used, and a lot of people point this out. So maybe Lilith is in there, and here she is in Isaiah chapter 34, uh, verse 14. In Isaiah 34, 14, we have the entire chapter is a judgment that is going to be coming to Edom. And in that judgment, it says in verse 14, the desert creatures will meet with the wolves. The hairy goat will also cry to its kind. Yes, the night monster will settle there and will find herself a resting place. The word used there is Lilith. And according to the Brown Diver Briggs Hebrew and English lexicon, the actual definition there is, quote, Lilith the name of a female goddess known as a night demon who haunts the desolate places of Edom. And not only do they point this out, but Lilith is the name of a succubus demon that actually Aleister Crowley mentions in his book, Diarte Magica. And so Lilith is something that they have over and over again, when you look at pagans and god haters and so forth, have derived some sort of meaning and make up these entire uh, illustrious stories about her. In fact, I remember growing up and women like Sarah McLaughlin and would sing at the Lilith's Fair and so forth. And this is just witchcraft repackage. It's just Satan in a different form in, and so forth. And not only is Lilith this hero in the story that she is now uh, manifesting, so to speak, in this new show, but also, of course, Satan's going to be the good guy. And in fact, if you actually check out our video, The True Manifestation of Evil, one thing that Pastor Joe points out in that documentary is the fact that Madame Blavatsky, who is, I mean, you guys have to see this documentary. It's pretty incredible because a lot of the uh, the modern day manifesting that so many people are getting involved with a lot of the idea of the law of attraction 
all come from Madame Blavatsky's The Secret that she ultimately got from demons. And in fact, Madame Blavatsky, where a lot of that stuff comes from, it is quite clear that not only was she in contact with some demon that she called the, you're going to hear it actually talked about right here, the lodger, but you can actually see how she tries to make Satan the good guy just like this show. But it's interesting because Blavatsky herself promotes Satan throughout her work and Gnosticism. In fact, she says that Satan is the real benefactor of man. She states, and I quote, Satan, the serpent of Genesis, is the real creator and benefactor, the father of spiritual mankind. For it is he who was the harbinger of light, bright and radiant, Lucifer, who opened the eyes of the woman created by Jehovah, and he who was the first to whisper in her ear, you eat thereof, and you shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. He can only be regarded as the light of a savior. Lucifer is divine and Satan at one and the same time. And it now stands proving that Satan is in us. He is our mind, our tempter, our redeemer, our intelligent liberator and savior. When it is taught that Lucifer is the one that is ultimately the hero of the story of the Bible, one has to not only wonder about a person's reading comprehension, but also what sort of a spirit a person could be in contact with that would guide them to believe and teach such a thing. As Pastor Schimmel points out, according to Blavatsky's own personal letter, this lodger helped to tell her this secret. Helena Blavatsky wrote to her sister, Vera, several times a day I feel that besides me there is someone else, quite separable from me, present in my body. I feel as if I were keeping silent, and the other one, the lodger who is in me, were speaking with my tongue. Do not be afraid that I am off my head. Someone enters me that thinks and writes for me. Now, another thing that we have to bring out is the fact that it does seem, and this is not the only show like this. Obviously, we could bring up Lucifer, the show that was on Fox. There are a number of different shows. We could talk about the Da Vinci Code and some of the parallels there with Gnosticism or I mean, all over the place, we could go show after show, the Truman Show. You could watch our documentary, Hollywood's War on God, and see how Gnosticism is ultimately being pushed over and over again and repackaged in different ways. But one thing that you might notice, and this is not only in this show, uh, but in others as well, there is a show, an animated series called Salem. But the sexual proclivities, those who hate the biblical sexual ethic a lot of times come out in the form of hatred towards God. It's not just something where, well, we have some differences and so forth. No, they have a hatred towards God and they want to besmirch his character. And so when you have somebody like Vivian Madrano who comes up with this show, just like Sam Sawyer and her show Salem, both of which the commonality you find between both of them is both of which claim themselves to be bisexual. And actually the Bible tells us this is exactly what happens. In Romans chapter 1, these people that are unthankful towards God, these people that do not know him or want to give him any glory, eventually are given over to their own devices. And then their hearts are given over. They're given over to the depravity of their mind and they become vicious towards other people and towards God himself. That's exactly what's described. It's exactly what's described in Psalm 14 when it says the fool has said in his heart, no God, there is no God. And it says his deeds are corruptible. It's exactly what it tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 when it tells us what the end times will look like, that people will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God over and over again. And you have people here in this very show who want redemption from their sins without the payment for it. Just like Adam and Eve, who they wanted to cover up their sin with fig leaves, they're going to find a different way to have redemption that's not through the blood of Jesus Christ. But guess what? Ultimately, they can write their stories, but it will not be found. And we want to bring Pastor Joe on here as we talk about, you know, specifically, we were just talking about 2 Timothy 3 here, you know, when it relates to Vivian Madrano, and I know, Joe, that you've already looked into her, seen some of the stuff she's, 
kind of into and and just you know you're trying to figure out a lot of times when we're looking at these things we're trying to figure out like where is this person coming from that is doing this and you know obviously having a presbyterian background it seemed like she was not happy with some of the bible stories about how you know it could be something where she's projecting that what she's feeling now as a feminist sure. or bisexual feminist or, or whatever she wants to call herself but yeah i mean you know where does it appear you know this this inverting of evil i mean just some wicked stuff going on here yeah it's interesting chad that you were talking about romans one and talking about you know uh, who she is as a bisexual and women with women and it goes on to speak of uh in in romans one that there'll be inventors of evil mm, which i think good. is very interesting yeah. and uh and like you said and i'm glad you brought this out that uh i've gotten a lot i've got before the show i've had different people coming to me joe are you guys gonna do something on this it's been like because it's blowing up you know, why do you guys talk about these kind of things? Because these are the things that are dominant in modern culture and what young people are getting into. And we're, ex we're, we're warned to expose the works of darkness so the light of Christ will shine on people and lift up Jesus. And that's how we're able to win many, many people to Christ. So, but Chad, I was like, I let them know. I go, yeah, you know, we're going to look into it. We'll probably do something on it. And I didn't realize it was dark as it was. And when I started looking at her being interviewed, uh, I realized, wow, she's had this, uh, you know, this childhood where she was attracted to uh, the dark side to the demonic to, to you know Satan type stuff and that's how I was before I was a Christian that's how I opened myself up to the demonic world and started channeling all this wicked stuff well she's I believe she actually said she really likes you know demonology in her interviews and, and she wanted to make every character evil in some way you know and uh, well she's doing it and as you brought out in the introduction I mean even what just the introduction that they'll see the thing is is every time these young people see this introduction they're being basically indoctrinated into Gnosticism because in Gnosticism, it's all, as you mentioned, it's an inversion of good and evil. And heaven is actually evil because it's coming down and bringing judgment and, 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 and bringing judgment. And they present that. And, and, and the daughter of Lilith, the demon, which is supposed to be a version of Eve, right? The daughter of Satan, you know, uh, Charlie Morningstar, which is one of the terms for Satan, by the way, in the Bible, the fallen, he's the fallen Morningstar. She's the hero. And, you know, she's the one that you want to get behind. And it's funny because Alan Moore, the top writer of, you know, comics, voted number one over and over again, follower of a lot of the teachings of Aleister Crowley, practitioner of his, his magic. He said, Chad, that, uh, you know, he, he, he loves, he loved Crowley, but he says Crowley's novels, you know, he'll make the, the, the devil worshipers are the good guys. Well, he knows all about, they know all about these inversions. And that's a steady diet of our young people getting these things. And it's heartbreaking because free will is, not freedom to choose from any tree of the garden except the one that'll just damn you, <laughs> which is true free will is, is having a choice, but mm -hmm. free will is activating free will is actually choosing to do evil, but they make it as though, oh, yeah, that God doesn't give you any freedom. Well, he just doesn't give you freedom to want to, you know, uh, murder people and, and, and so forth. Uh, so it's interesting. It's all, it's all a total inversion. And she admits that she's into demonology and stuff. And now she, her heart and darkness is being manifested or Satan is through her. It's not wrestling against her, wrestling against the principalities and rules of darkness who are using her as a channel. Yeah, it's really sad. And, and you can almost see that whole thing playing out. And, you know, if you described who I thought was probably going to be doing a show like, like this, it would be someone that has that angst, you know, that they're trying to come out against. And, you know, some of you mentioned, you know, why expose all these things? You know, Joe, I remember when you did a, a video, and I was a newer believer at the time, on Legion, the movie that, that had come out. And it was the same thing, making God the evil person yeah. and, and, and so forth. And I had friends at that time who were like, oh, this is a great movie. It's like a Christian movie. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm like... People can get diluted that way. And, Amen. and people can think, oh, it's no big deal. There, were, People wrote to us, Joe, when we exposed Lucifer on, on our channel, like, oh, it's really not that bad of a show. Lucifer's not a bad guy. Yeah, that's the point. To make him look like a good to guy. We, him show, him, like a good we guy. show a scene where he's blaspheming God. <laughs> you cruel, manipulative... Is this all part of your plan? It's all just a game to you, isn't it? Hey, I know punishment, and he did not deserve that. He followed your stupid rules, and it still wasn't good enough. So what does it take to please you? Break your rules and you fall, follow them, and you still lose. It's a heartbreaking thing, and, and Joe, obviously, watching the show, one of the main characters is the radio demon, but his name is Alistair. 
It didn't explain anything about how we're trying to save demons from extermination, which is the whole thing. Point. Vaggie is right, Alistair. The commercial was to let sinners know we are trying to help them. Well, my dear, I haven't been active in hell for some time, and everyone remembers me from my radio show. Which is yeah. kind of interesting. Once again, we have another Alistair in um, one of these and, uh, you shows. You know, you can't make this stuff up, and it gets so predictable as well. I mean, you, you know, yeah. in Marvel and, and DC and with a lot of these top writers, because they're into Crowley, he gets projected Harry into Potter so many too. things. Harry Potter as well. He's, you know, a magician there. Alistair Moody. Ex Auror. Ministry malcontent. And your new defense against the dark arts teacher. I am here because Dumbledore asked me. End of story. Goodbye. The end. It's interesting because right when I saw Alistair and he's one of the main characters, I'm like, okay, give me a break. You know, <laughs> it's just so predictable. But you know what? I went to, you know, uh, to look at his character and I knew what I'd find, you know. And right away, you see he's a wizard, you know. He is in control of a bunch of, you know, uh, demons and so forth. He's a practitioner magic. He's very charming, you know, and he's always smiling. And Aleister Crowley liked to seem amiable, but he has this darker interior that he's hiding, which is what Crowley was all about. And different. there were so many parallels to what Crowley is about. I'm like, okay, this is obvious. But one of the things that jumped out the most when I was looking at, uh, you know, his skill set and his magical abilities and so forth uh, and to see the influence of Aleister Crowley on this character, which, by the way, she said was this the first, I believe, the first character she had ever since she was in grade school. Mm. And, and she's not very old, so there was all kinds of stuff in the stuff, demonology, which she's attracted to that promotes Aleister Crowley. I don't, believe me, she's not wondering, oh, 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 by the way, yeah, oh, Aleister Crowley, oh, they're very, they're very similar, and oh, they happen to have the same name. It's, give me a break. You know, in fact, this is what I found of interest. I'm like, oh, he manipulates shadows, and he has a, he's known as the, he's the main character that has this shadow self and you see a shadow in the background. He utilizes the shadow that he's the, the, the dark shadow of himself to like, you know, basically navigate his way and travel through hell. And I thought, you know, and then he manipulates other shadows as well to do his bidding. And, you know, he sells souls and all these things, which is what Crowley is about selling souls and, and so forth and getting people to sell their souls, right, for power. Uh, but what's interesting is Crowley was into this shadow self, you know, uh, in fact, he was into what the, the whole basis of Satanism, Aleister Crowley's Satanism, is getting in touch with your true self, your true will, your higher self, your true identity, your shadow self. And many of the writers that are into Crowley in, in the magic, they'll talk about the shadow self. And Crowley was into the shadow self, which is a Jungian a term uh, that, that Crowleyites use because Jung and Crowley had some interesting parallels and they were contemporaries of each other. But it's interesting because uh, in, in Satanism, in Christianity, you deny the old man, you count him dead, you recognize you want to crucify that old fallen Adamic nature and not open and be under the power of Satan in the spirit world. In Crowleyism, this dark, nebulous, evil flesh is supposed to be down as to be embraced and, as, and it becomes a manifestation, is manifested as your guardian angel, which is another entity. And then you're basically giving your life over to this guardian angel, which is this darker self. And then you have power and you integrate with this guardian angel, which is your higher self. And then you integrate all these other demonic entities, the other shadows into yourself. You integrate them as part of yourself. So you have power through these other entities, which become part of yourself to do magic and be effective in the, in, in the world. Well, it's very interesting because, and then that's where the philosophy do what thou wilt comes because you're releasing your inner will of that darker self. Well, the shadow of Alester is very powerful in allowing him to navigate and do what he wants to do. And he gets in touch with, in the, in the show, these other dark uh, shadows that he manipulates to do his bidding. I'm like, this is full-blown Aleister Crowley stuff, you know? And I'm sure, and by the way, let's say innocently, when she's not innocent, obviously she loves demonology, is promoting evil, and I'm pretty sure she knows that, you know? But let's say she says, no, it all just came to me. Well, then she's just channeling by these demons, and they know what's going on with Crowley and these connections, but I don't believe she's just... Uh, just channeling it. She, she's pretty aware of what's going on. Yeah, I think that's important for people to understand. You know, there's no way out of this when you're always projecting wickedness towards people and like, oh, I just thought it was a really fun story. And I was just, I, I just kept going towards all these dark pictures and all these drawings and all of this lifestyle. I Oh, I just, it just so happened. Guys, this is a spiritual battle. That's the reason we're talking about it. This is not just a lot of different ideas and some, you know, people have this view and that view. 
No, this is all going towards something. There's a culmination of our faith that ends in salvation with Jesus forever and ever. And there's a culmination of judgment. There is a two-edged sword here where we get to be with the Lord forever in glory with him. And the everyone else gets to go away. And there is no redemption for them. It's appointed man wants to die and then comes the judgment. And so when we look at this, Joe, I guess, you know, the last question we got to have is where do you think this whole thing's going? Because this is somebody who started it off a Patreon page. A bunch of people like their artwork. And then next thing you know, I mean, she really got famous in the beginning on her, you know, with Vivzy Pop on her YouTube channel by making a graphic music or a graphic video for the song Die Young, which we exposed, and we'll put a link in the description from Kesha. Mm-hmm. And it, it's interesting. Which was that, banned eventually. Yeah, which was eventually taken down. But you look at it here and you're like, okay, you get 95 million views on your YouTube channel. Then A24 has been putting out movie after movie that, I mean, uncut gems and yeah. everything all at once or all the, some other Gnostic, um, you know, propaganda that that's out there. But you're looking at this and it's like, well, where do you think this show might be going? Yeah, and it's, you bring up a great point about how it's point of man wants to die, but after this judgment, there's no redemption, there's no second chance. But this present, this gives the world view that, guess what? You know, if you're damned in the end, don't worry, there's still another chance, perhaps. And I believe where this is going, perhaps in the show, we don't know, we'll see, but I'm just speculating a little bit. But in the show, it may end with, uh, you know, I, I could see them making Charlie Morningstar, Satan's daughter, basically uh, getting an agreement with heaven and, and redeeming many souls that get... Saving that, and maybe even guess what? Ruling heaven because she's such a wise ruler, uh, and you know Satan's daughter becomes the ruler uh, of heaven. I could see them doing that. Uh, they may not bite off that much, but we know where it's going scripturally, and we know that this is preparing the world because in the Book of Revelation, when I was a new Christian, I knew because I came out of the darkness and the occult, and I can see that Satan was has power over the princes in his prince power of the air and what the Bible's but when I read, read the Bible I'm like okay Satan has a lot of power but in the book of Revelation it says all all people worship the beast and they'll worship Satan and the dragon it says who gives power to the beast I'm like wow the world's gonna be full of a bunch of devil worshippers taking the mark of the beast right on their forehead and it says in Revelation 9 they won't repent most of them won't repent it says they won't repent meaning the world that's being judged uh, of their worship of demons and so forth and that, that's what's happening here is Young people are being immersed in uh, a culture whereby magic is acceptable, using the power of demons is acceptable, yet they're putting a spin on it to give them the hope of redemption in the end because Satan hates the idea of judgment. He knows that the the Bible says God brings his judgments in the earth that the nations may learn righteousness. And Satan doesn't want them to repent. So he makes it look as though there's a way of redemption outside of the Lord Jesus Christ who Satan hates. And, you know, those in our audience ought to know that guess what, man? This is all real. This is a, a satanic, twisted version of the truth to delude people. But everybody ought to know, if you don't know it, I mean, the Bible says, as Chad, you said, it's pointing man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And Jesus said that hell was created for the devil and his angels, but he also revealed that most people are going down that broad road to destruction. There'll be no second chance. Jesus says, some people will be knocked, like, let me in. And he said, it's too late. You know, that's in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Now is the day of your salvation. So it's important that, Chad, our audience recognizes that, man, you need to turn to Jesus Christ now because your life, the Bible says, is like a vapor. It's here and gone. And then you're going to either be in hell or you're going to be, be absent from the body if you're saved with the Lord. So you need to accept what Jesus Christ did on the cross and pay for your sins. Otherwise, you're going to pay for them forever. And he died and he rose again, conquered the grave, conquered hell, conquered Satan, Chad, so we can have eternal life through faith in Christ. Amen. You guys, turn to him now before it is too late because there is coming a day of judgment. God bless you guys. It's been uh, Joe Schimmel and Chad Davidson, and this is the 511 News. Thank you guys so much for watching 511 News. You can check out some of the older episodes as well as the Good Fight Radio Show and videos we have right here on our YouTube channel. And this week's feature product is the first installment of our Marvel and DC's War on God the Antichrist Agenda. Check it out on goodfight.org. God bless you guys.